the Joe Rogan experience. We got to stop doing that with dolphins and orcas. It's going to be thought of the same way we think about slavery today. It's her that it's horrific. We can't understand it. And we can't believe that compassionate human beings would be willing to isolate members of a super social, highly intelligent animal species and just put them in swimming pools. It's fucking barbaric it's crazy it's torture it's it's and what's sad here is you know we're years removed from the documentary blackfish yeah and you know that was really impactful i mean arguably uh, responsible for the paradigm shift that we're that we're experiencing here in north america and other places of course um but maybe it's time for people to revisit it i know sea world uh their stock is, and their value is sort of going up now granted they you know, they change their numbers, they skew it, they have free beer day, they pump the numbers up, you know, they have all these different promotions, whatever. I mean, everything that comes out of these these facilities, these, assume it to be all bullshit, by the way. It, it, it's all bullshit, but not enough people question them on it. But as we speak, while we're amidst sort of a paradigm shift here, and uh, I mean, I can speak to it because, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy to say that we have very effectively decimated marine land, and we'll talk more about that. But uh, over in China, this is now a burgeoning uh, business. And, I, and I did, we discussed this a year and a half ago, and it's, it's tenfold now. It's happening very quickly. And I'm sure you're familiar with the whale jail situation in Russia. Have you seen that? No, I have not. They've got uh, enclosed in this bay, they've got over 100 uh, wild-caught belugas and orcas. So there's about 10 orcas, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, some activists flew a drone over it. This got worldwide attention, uh, a lot of outcry, a lot of uh, anger, of course. Um, so what happened was... Jamie's showing yeah, it to it us right now for the folks that are listening. Yeah. And we're looking down at the, what looks like swimming pools with, uh, I guess those are belugas? Those what have all those? been sold. Those are essentially sold and ready to go to China. Uh, Jesus. But on account of the fact that the activists got this and it created a real worldwide stink... Um, all the negative press that came of it, uh, they've now resolved that they want to try to, well, they've, they've hard considered, uh, releases. Um, the governor in the area signed a intent to release agreement with the world sank uh, with the whale sanctuary project, uh, who sent a team to assess the animal's health and whatnot. And this was all of like three weeks ago. It's not a long time ago. And they assessed that all these animals should be released. There's a couple of issues. There's a couple of things that, that becoming conflicting. A, it's going to require a lot of cost if it's done responsibly. B, it appears... Okay, so what's happened is, as we know, Russia is not exactly a democratic uh, environment. Only one person makes the decisions. On account of what becomes of these whales, whereas there was some PR stunts to say, hey, we're gonna, we want to release them, we want to do this to sort of mitigate the global outrage, the captors have propagandized this entire effort to to free these whales as a means for the West to undermine the Russia's, Russia's economy, so the whale trade economy. Here's where marine land comes into play, in a, in a theory at this point, but it, it has these in very intense implications. What we know about what marine land is doing currently in their transition from brilliantly successful business to virtually decimated, thank you, um, is... They're shipping their whales out. We know two um, are going out. If it's not this week, it'll be very soon. I'll be shocked if they're not out. I'm in LA, so I can't say that it's happening right now. I think it may be, very well be happening this week. They're going to Spain. We know that five other permits have been uh, requested to send these animals now to the States. The so is it they're liquidating? They're, the yeah, they're, they're, going, they're liquidating. But the issue is... If in fact Russia catch, catches wind that Marine Land is send, sending their whales, let's use the worst case scenario, to China, it validates the Russian captor's propaganda and concerns. Suddenly what we're concerned is going to happen is those animals, suddenly Putin says, forget it, sell them, ship them out. That's, that's a scenario. Why, why would he do that? Because again, the, the captors have propagandized that the West wants to cripple the, Russia's economy, their, their wild whale sale economy. So if Marine Land is selling whales to China from Canada, mm -hmm. then suddenly the captors have a point. They'll say to Putin, look, they're, they're selling whales. Why is it such an outrage that Russia's doing it when Marine Land's doing it? Mm. So there's that concern. The other one, and this just came up within the last 20 hours, 
is it appears rather than go the most responsible route, which we know is going to be a costly endeavor, but you know, we're game and we're ready is, uh, they're now considering just dropping the nets and saying, see you later. And letting all the animals go. Here's what we suspect. They're going to let the orcas go because they were captured illegally. Uh, there's some gray area as to whether the beluga whales have been captured illegally or not. So I think it'll probably start with the orcas. Rather than move them to where they were at the same time of year uh, when they were captured so that they can be next to their, their trans, uh, transient pods or their, 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 um, their pods, they just want to drop this, this net and say, see you later. Oh. Well, that's as irresponsible as it can get. But that's crazy. It's like l making someone a slave for how many years and well, then it's letting them a year move somewhere so. on the planet. But imagine their hope you can imagine would be, oh, see, it didn't work. Oh, Jesus. There's a lot of, uh, there's a, this is a big issue. Uh, we're on it. There's a, there's a great uh, team of activists over there. Would it be accurate to say that uh, maybe what these groups are doing right now is recognizing that there's probably going to be some radical changes in the way these things are permitted, what's legal, what's not legal, and what people are tolerating is just not the same as it was 10 years ago. Catch them and sell them as fast as you can. Yeah, just get out while you can, because it might come a point in time when not only could they not sell it, but they might be responsible for doing exactly what you said and bringing it back to the area where its family would be, which would be an incredible cost. It I would mean, be an incredible cost. It would be an undertaking unlike any other rescue uh, that we know of. And uh, How much would something like that cost? I can't even imagine. I mean, it, I, I would be the wrong person to ask. I can't put a figure on it. I just know that it would take a lot of time. Uh, there would be a lot of dedicated, uh, I mean, we would need you'd have vessels. You'd to track the pods. Yeah, you'd have to figure you'd it out. you need vessels that would be able to, to bring yeah. the whales out. I mean, it, And you would have to be able to somehow or another get it close enough to the other whales without freaking them out. It's a whole thing, but it's possible i mean that's the important part fuck man the whole it's just one of those things that i really think as people we're going to look back on and we're going to go man how did we in 2019 not know that that was insane that is that is not a chicken you know what i'm saying i mean that's not like something you could just keep in a cage that's that it, so let's back up to, uh, as you know, for well over four and a half years, five years now, I've been advocating for Bill S203, which is a ban against, uh, which is a national Canada-wide ban against uh, uh, whale and dolphin and porpoise captivity. So that would include no more breeding, no more import, no more export, any of that. Okay. During these, this, this, by the way, is going down as the longest bill ever researched in Canadian history because it's been a lot of issues from uh, opposition. Uh, one, one senator in particular, in fact, and if I can have a moment to just give uh, Senator Don Plett a big ol', I win, you piece of shit. Can, which camera do I look at for that? No. I win, you piece of shit. Sorry, I should, I should be more humble. But Was that the other guy, the this lawyer is on the, the other side? No, no, this is the senator that has put every possible... Um, block in front of the passage of this bill. He's tried to kill it silently forever. I mean, this is an epic, epic story. We've had to, as activists and the community at large, and again, I have to stress how much you've had a, a hand in this, is I've had, to re I've had to have these campaigns where we literally flood the Senate servers to the point of crashing it on a, on a couple of uh, instant, uh, instances where they were going to kill the bill very silently through a sort of procedure. He's got, as a, his role is, a, is, is called the Senate whip. So he actually yields a lot of influence and power. He, he uh, creates the committees where people do the studies and everything. He sets the, uh, the, the dates for the committees. I mean, he had this thing studied for like 17 straight months. It was absurd. Again, the longest tenure in uh, in uh, Canadian legislative history, it, it appears. But this guy was, you know, doing his his, uh, his so he best was, to kill it. Do you think that? What do you think? Like, why was he doing that? He's one of these guys who looks at, at this bill and he sees it as a activist, sort of left wing, um, liber you know, liberal sort of fluff bill. He doesn't see that it's necessary. He went to Marineland as an invited guest. Uh, he, he's very uh, publicly declared his friendships for John Holder. I don't want to speculate as to whether there's been any uh, money exchanges, but I know he's certainly very interested in killing this bill. And by virtue alone of activists pressuring and exposing all of his uh, his efforts, we actually saved this bill on a number of occasions. Uh, the most notable of which was just a few weeks ago, where uh, in the House of Commons, it appeared this bill was going to die. And literally at the 11th hour, I packed up 
We drove to Ottawa. I had a tweet storm set up. We put pressure on it. I tweeted individual senators, or rather individual members of, uh, of parliament, and uh, I promised them. And, you know, this is a sensitive time in Canadian politics for Justin Trudeau, the leader of the, of the Liberal Party. I, I promised them if this bill dies on account of the fact that w- what was happening was the Liberals were going to propose amendments to the bill at the last second, that would send it back to the Senate for further review, at which point we know Don Plett was waiting in line to kill it. There was nothing we could do at this point. This was going to be his to kill. The mm-hmm. fact that this was being fa- f- uh, facilitated by Liberals was really an infuriating thing. But nonetheless, we applied an incredible amount of pressure. I drove my ass down there. I got there and I stood in front of every which one of them and I looked them all in the eyes. I'm just like, I'm going to make you famous. I'm going to make you famous. And I'm going to make you famous and I'll make you famous. And uh, I don't want to speculate if that's what, if that's what saved the day. Although it was mentioned in the house of commons that special interest pressured them at the last second, but in a, in a last. Is that legal? Can you say that to someone? I'm going to make you famous. I think it's, it's it's my most, it's my most effective tool. (laughs) It's like a scene from uh, like uh, what's that? What What was the cowboy movie where Val Kilmer? played uh doc holiday remember tombstone, tombstone? Yeah. yeah sounds like a line in tombstone right I'll no you know what it's from one. uh the one with the bon jovi song you know those those you know shot down a blaze of glory you know you know those those what uh those cute guys in the it was it the 80s or 90s that were all like did a western movie together Young guns yes that's it it's from that i'm gonna make you famous oh shit sorry well. <laughs> i knew i'd heard it from somewhere i think it's from that well i'd, I'd hope to i'd hope it was my line but nonetheless yeah. it's what remember uh, emilio estevez this was, this was arguably the campiest cheesiest of the cowboy movies sorry. right is it the campiest i don't today i didn't see it i don't know they're all handsome <laughs> handsome devils um, sorry. So I, so I show up and so you show up. literally they, it, the, right before the meeting starts, the entire uh, committee stands up and leaves the room. We're, now we're, we're there and we're prepared for this to die. I'm there for a funeral. Uh, they come back in the conservative members of the committee uh, propose their amendments. The liberals, which outweigh the, uh, uh, the conservatives are, you know, they're all voting. So they're just knocking these things down, knocking them down, knocking them down. And then suddenly it comes to the liberals time to propose, uh, their amendments. First guy comes up and he says, I'd like to withdraw my amendment. Noted on the record, sits down. Okay. We'll go to number two. I'd like to withdraw my amendment. Sits down. Number three, I'd like to withdraw my amendment. We're like, holy shit. I'm looking back. You know, I've got some, we've got some people there that uh, obviously of, 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 of this, with the same interests as me and you know, I don't even know exactly what's going on at this point. I just know that uh, their faces are indicative that this we might win this thing. And the fourth uh, member of parliament stands up. He withdraws the amendment and we save this thing in the last second. And I absolutely know it was a pressure campaign because like I said, I was going to come on this podcast. I'd already had this date written for some time and this was going to have political implications that I don't know that the liberal party could have sustained. It's a really bad time. I think this came from the top down, Mm. whereas efforts to kill it came from the bottom up. This came from the top down. You're not killing that bill. I think people are understanding what dolphin captivity really is, what orchid captivity really is. I think they're understanding that now. And I think it's just one of those things that exists because it's always existed. But if it didn't exist now, there's no fucking way anybody would ever let you do it. If, if there was no captive dolphins and orcas, if someone just went around and kidnapped them with what scientists know now about their social structure and their community, dude, they're so complex. The way they, t- they have fucking dialects, right? It's, they have dialects. Orcas have, uh, um, they have, they share languages in different regions and actually have a different accent of sorts. I mean, it's, uh. It's really remarkable stuff. Yeah, right. It would be a global outrage if today, if, as day one, they, someone said, hey, look at this right. thing. Let's put this in this box. I mean, but because be we have absurd. them already. Well, because we have them and there's some legacy businesses that have been around for a long time. That's a great way of putting it. Um, you know, they have the means to fight. They know now that, look, this is not going so well. You can, you can see it in all the advertising uh, these days. Uh, uh, SeaWorld almost rarely shows any orcas in their commercials, although it seems the industry is... Uh, sort of switching to baby walruses. <laughs> in fact, they're 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 the new orcas. They're sort of the new brandable, cute 
Um, really? Yeah, it really is. It's happening all over. It's happening in Canada as well. The Vancouver Aquarium is running with it. Um, yeah, and, and same as SeaWorld. If you go to their their Twitter, it's you know I, I can't say that present day. It, it's it's like literally the case today. But uh, yeah, a lot of baby walrus uh, stuff. It's where it's going. It's just they know that they can run with that at least for for the time being. <sighs> What's crazy in all this is here this bill is passing. Now we know it's going to pass. It's uh, it should be it should get royal assent uh, come second week of June. Uh, shy of some some catastrophe, this thing will become law. Um, that's why Marineland is trying to get rid of these whales as quickly as they can. They yeah. got to get them out of here because at least now they can just, well, it sounds like two, two, uh, export permits have been approved. So they're, so two beluga whales are going to Spain. Um, you know, now granted that's being facilitated through the Vancouver aquarium. This becomes an ugly mess here because when it comes to zoos, they're all part of these associations. Okay. And these are, these are industry voices. Anything that's, if anytime you're told, wow, this is an AZA accredited facility, you know, most schools for instance, or, or general people would say, oh, well, it's accredited. It's a good place. No, 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 no. What that means is these places facilitate, uh, tr animal transfers and whatnot to other member facilities. It's really just a club and this club protects, uh, the interests of these parks and keeps any type of oversight, lack, they're lobby groups, basically. So what's happened is now through the Vancouver Aquarium, Marineland, so Marineland is sending these whales to Spain, but they're claiming them to be Vancouver Aquarium uh, uh, whales, which is not true. They were never on these animals' inventory, or rather this facility's inventory list. There's never been any knowledge of any of this. But what's happened is because Vancouver Aquarium is accredited and has an affiliation with the AZA, so in Canada we call it CASA, the Canadian Association of Zoos and Aquarium, and Marineland is, is in fact not. Uh, they no longer have their accreditation. They, did, they didn't have the best of relationships shortly after all of our revelations. Um, it's all just, right now it's just, ev all, the industry as a whole is breaking all of its own rules to facilitate getting these beluga whales. Marineland has 51 of them, okay? There's five born every year but they always have 51 and they don't, they haven't shipped an orca out in nearly a decade at this point. Um, I mean, you do the math at what's going on exactly. But so they're dying. They always have 51. They don't ship them anywhere else. I can attest that. Yes. Uh, when I was there and in my experience, and you know, you have to watch my words because I know Marine lands lawyer, Andrew Burns is listening. Hi, Andrew. I'll see you next week. Um, in my experience, uh, yeah, you're uh, for as many, Animals are born, you're just about losing as many. So you'll lose two old ones, you'll lose three young ones. Not all the ones that are born are going to be successful. Just about half are. Um, so, so what's happening now is the industry wants that bloodline. There's 51 captive orcas, whereas, you know, there's a lot of controversy in importing animals from other places. The states can't, in fact, they can't bring them in from Russia without a public consult period. It might still be the case with Canada. So actually the public might actually be consulted uh, about the import of these five belugas that... Um, Marineland is seeking permit for it to export. So that's something that certainly as an activist level, I'll be, I'll be, you know, helping to uh, guide towards the proper resolution. But yeah, that's all happening. It is a race right now to, to get rid of Marineland's animals. And, uh, man, it is a wild time. It's, it's a wild time to be inside the doors at Marineland, as I can imagine in, in the fences. Uh, and it's, it's a most wild time for me to be on the outside because I've never in the last six and a half years of, of litigation and just of my advocacy and being sort of in a, a, you know, basically being engaged in war with Marineland, I've never seen them w work harder to suppress me and to try to silence me than they are now. 